say, I thank God for you. We bless you. We bless you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Fa Father. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Jesus, we're here for you tonight. Jesus, we just adore you. We love you. We worship you tonight, Jesus. We thank you, Father. We thank you, Father, for all you're doing in the earth. God, we thank you for all you're doing in this city. We thank you for all you're doing in this place in our lives, God. We thank you. We give you thanksgiving. We enter your gates with thanksgiving in our hearts. We enter your courts with praise tonight. And we say, God, with all that is within us, with all that is within us, we worship you tonight. We welcome your presence in this place and we honor you, Lord. We welcome the, the uh, presence, the canopy of angels that you have set apart on our behalf. The seven spirits of God, the tutors, teachers that you sent into the earth. <clears throat> we welcome and honor that cloud of witnesses, Lord, that are working, that are working, that are speaking. We thank you, Father. We thank you for heaven, Lord. We thank you for every creature you have in heaven, Lord. We want all of heaven tonight. All of heaven tonight. We just agree, right? All of heaven tonight. We say yes to you, Lord. We say yes. We say, Spirit of God, do whatever pleases the Father's heart tonight. We love you, Lord. We just give you, let's just give the Lord a shout tonight. We just, and we just bless you, Jesus. We bless you, Jesus. And we bless you. We bless you. And all God's people said, amen.
the city. He was bringing the Ark of the Covenant with him. He was coming in all the priests, all the people, all the horns blatting, all the music playing. And as the gates of the city opened up, David, the king of the city, David, the king of Israel, started doing this just a crazy dance. So tonight, I want you to just let go a little bit. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. Let your feet start moving. Oh, maybe your shoulders are shimmy. Oh, your hands might start tapping your leg. If you can't stand up, we'll pray for you. If you don't know how to dance, that's OK. You're in good company. Just, just get ready. Let's worship the Lord with all our heart, all our soul, all our mind, all our strength. Come on, let's, let's lift our sound. Let's go. Let's go. pressed in together tonight? What if we pressed in together into worship? What if we disregarded the culture around us? What if we disregarded the ins and outs and ups and downs of the week that we just had? What if we disregarded our own thoughts or our own feelings tonight? What if we disregarded all of that and set our eyes on the Lord and pushed in and worshiped Him? Mighty and wise Ray Hughes once said, but let's worship until we pull something. Thee, the 
the weight on the Lord shall renew their strength. Run and not be weary, walk and not faint. In the way of the Lord, shall renew their strength. Run and not get weary, walk and not faint. Let's do this. Um, let's just let's just have let's do a glory pit. <laughs> it's Friday night. Yeah, you guys doing good? So let's. Why don't why everyone just come up to the front? When Jonathan sings about when Jonathan sings about dancing, let's let's respond just by going nuts tonight and dancing. And, it, and if he and if he sings, they like about running. You got permission just to take off running, and and as we, as we intentionally unite tonight, <laughs> hey, let's just declare we are united. One, two, three. We are united. How I many you know that where there's unity, God commands a blessing? And we're just going to unite in the spirit tonight because how do you know that what God wants to release in this place is something new, it's something fresh, it's not, it's not a repeat thing. And, and I, there's something about uniting in the spirit and just coming before Jesus as one, as one broad, a body, one bride. Is that good? And how many of you, you just need some strength tonight? Like, 
How many of you, you want to run and not grow weary? How many of you, you want to you accomplish stuff with the Lord but not get worn out? Just wave at me. Yeah, 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 yeah. And so, let, so let's do it again. Go ahead, just come up, come up, come up. Get real, get real tight. Get real tight. And, and let me just say this. Not that you need this, but you might. You have permission to be free tonight, okay? There's no, there's no fear in this place. There's no shame in this place. There's no religious control in this place. You have permission to be a child tonight, to come into the kingdom like a child. Is that good? All right, awesome. Let's, let's, let's disrupt some stuff in the heavens above Seattle with our worship, with, with our praise. Come on, let's just lift up a shout. One, two, three. One more time. One, two, three. One last time. One, two, three. Here we go. Here we go. I will wait. I will wait. I will wait for you. I will wait. I will wait. I will wait for you. I will wait. Wait. I will wait.
I will dance, I will sing, I will shout for you. I will dance, I will sing, I will shout for you. I will dance.
it releases something new. Oh, it sets free something in the atmosphere. Oh, when we open up our hearts and open up our mouths, oh, we pour all we are into a sound. like y'all to know that he's thankful for you voting tonight, voting to be in here. 
Voting with your bodies. Voting with your, can I say this, with your booties? Let's lift our hands up to the Lord tonight. Let's just lift our hands up to Him. Let's lift your eyes up to the heavens.
could just keep playing that a little bit. And I was just sitting there thinking, you know, the dancing is fun and the shouting is fun and the, all that just going on in the room is, is fun for a Friday night. But there's just nothing like connecting with Jesus, right? There's nothing that compare to connecting with Jesus, to connecting with your heart, with his heart, to know him more to, and more. And, you know, I just feel in these days, <clears throat> I have felt this the last couple of weeks, that just when I'm gathered together with people, the heart of Jesus is saying, what I want to give you is me. What I want to give you is me. So just let's just take a couple of more minutes and just let that happen. Let that happen that, you know, some of us need healing, some of us need finances, some of us need restoration, and all those things our God will give us. But what, what tonight, what we really need is to encounter Jesus, right? That's why we do these meetings. We do these meetings to encounter Jesus. So just take a minute, just take a minute, and just say, Jesus, my heart is your heart. Your strength is my strength. Your love is my love. Your thoughts are my thoughts. And I entangle myself with you tonight. Thank you, Jesus, that you love me. You've always loved me, and you always will. Amen. Amen. All right. Well, tell somebody you love them. And then find your seat. You do nothing? Are you doing nothing? Welcome, <laughs> welcome to our revival night. Did you come expecting to experience more reviving presence from Jesus tonight? Did you come tonight to drink from the wellspring of life? Isn't Jesus good? He, is, isn't Jesus wonderful? We just proclaim the Lordship of Christ Jesus in this room right now. We just declare the name above all names, the Lord above all lords. We just declare that Jesus is the Christ, that Jesus is the holy and anointed one of God. We just declare the atmosphere of Christ Jesus in this room. We declare the glory of Christ Jesus in this room. We declare even to the air, the Prince of Peace, the mighty God, the Ancient of Days. We declare, yet yeah, worthy is the Lamb that was slain. Worthy is the Lamb that was slain. Worthy Worthy is the Lamb. Worthy is the Lamb. Worthy is the Lamb. We declare Jesus is the Christ. You are the Holy One of God. We declare you are the Ancient of Days and you are here tonight. We love you, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. We love your presence. Jesus, your presence is what matters most to us. Jesus, your presence is what matters most to us. Father, we pray that everything that we do here tonight, that it would not be contained by this room tonight. Lord, we pray that there would be implications even on the region tonight. Lord, we pray that it would be like a volcano in the spirit tonight, that, that something would erupt from this place tonight, and that, that the, the ramifications, that the, that the side effects of what you do in the spirit here tonight would even shift something in the region. Lord, we thank you for what you're doing in the Pacific Northwest. We thank you, Father, for the hearts of the saints that are being awakened in this time. We thank you, Father, that you are drawing all men unto yourself in this time, in your word it says that when your name is lifted up, that you would draw all men unto you. So again, we lift up the name, the name, the name, the name, the name of Jesus in this room. We lift up the name of Jesus above our hearts tonight. We lift up the name of Jesus into the frequency, into the airspace. We prophesy, we ascend even over Seattle tonight, and we declare Jesus Christ is Lord. Jesus Christ is God, and we declare God is good, and his mercy endures forever. Ever. Amen. Come on, let's give thanks to the Lord for he is good and his steadfast love endures forever and ever and ever. 
You know, oftentimes we make bro- uh, proclamations and declarations, and we don't, we don't make these statements just for us, but we make these statements because we know that these proclamations and declarations go out into the airspace, and they, they shift things. We know that even as we begin to worship the Lord, as we begin to worship not just in truth, but we begin to worship in spirit, that everything we do begins to ascend, even unto the hill of God. And, and I, I believe that even tonight, do, how many of you know that when your life is changed, that's an act of worship. You know, sometimes we think that worship's just when we sing or just when we, hey, let's thank this worship team. Let's thank Jonathan in this. Thank you guys. Amazing. Amazing. But, you know, I love the kind of worship that takes place when lives are changed. You know, we just had the opportunity, um, Anthony and, uh, and James and I just got back last night from Colorado Springs where we did a uh, Holy Spirit week with YWAM there for their DTS. And it was, it, was, it was so much fun seeing the kind of worship that comes from a changed life, you know. There was one girl that said she never heard God's voice and she was really frustrated because she never gets to hear um, God's voice. And so we said, well, first of all, you, you are hearing God's voice all the time. You just have haven't learned how to discern the data. <laughs> so don't be frustrated because you are hearing God's voice. You just need to learn how to discern it. You know, by the end of the week, she came up to us and she said, I'm hearing God's voice. And not only am I hearing God's voice, I'm going into visions. In fact, she said, last night I was taken up into heaven and I got to dance with the Lord in the garden. And, 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 and have, yeah, that's cool. That's good. Yeah. Um, another girl, uh, another pr- a precious girl from, I, I believe, a good Baptist home and incredible foundation in, in, the, in the spirit. And, and, she, um, and she had never felt the Holy Spirit before. And we did a whole thing. It's not about feelings. It's about faith. But feelings are nice. Let's be honest. And so um, we prayed for her. And we did, we did our darnness, you know. Holy Spirit, come. Fire. More. Take it. Take it. Take it. Take it. You know. And, 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 you know, and, and then we asked her, hey. Are you feeling anything? And she said, no. And we said, well, that's okay. That's okay. On, on, the, on the last day, she came up to us and she said to us, you know, when you prayed, I didn't think I was feeling anything, but when you took my, your hands off of me, all of a sudden the room got cold. She said, I thought the room was really hot, but it wasn't. It was, it was something. I was feeling fire on my head. So... We said, you know, (laughs) that's Jesus, and let's pray that the fire goes from your head to your heart. She said, okay, so we began to pray, and guess what? The fire came back, and it began to move from her head to her heart, and she began to feel the fire of God all all, all over. And you should have saw, there's there's something about the kind of worship that comes from a changed life. There's something about the kind of worship that comes from somebody that has an epiphany or a revelation that the king of glory is inside of you. And that he's not coming just to visit. He's coming to inhabit you. That, that tonight the Holy Spirit is inside of you. And that when you lift your voice in, in, in a song, when you, even, even when you hear something that you come into agreement with something that Matt says tonight and you just say, amen, there's something about a voice. There's something about a frequency. There's something about traditions that honor the Lord throughout a service when people and cultures begin to respond with their voice and they begin to say things like, come on, or bring it, or, 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 or what, however, however they say it. There's something about response. There's, just say, there's something about response. You know, there's something about, there's something about participating with what the Lord is doing. We, we teach our children, you know, in our education system how to be excellent spectators. You know, we teach our children that a good student is a quiet student. You know, a, a good student is a student that, that sits down and, and minds their own business and keeps their hands folded and, 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 and isn't a disruption. And we end, up, we end up teaching our students all these bad habits because then they graduate um, high school and all of a sudden they find out it was the kids that couldn't stay seated that succeeded in life. It was the kids that wouldn't shut up that really made a difference in the culture. All of a sudden kids grow up and they they realize that they've been lied to all their lives. They were told if they obeyed the rules, if they just played it safe, if they just stayed silent, if they just stayed quiet, if they just followed the rules, then, 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 then they could be accepted. But there was other kids that said, I don't care about being accepted. I, I, I need to be me. I need to, I need to celebrate who God has made me to be. And 
and, and so I just want to break off of you all that religious stuff that says a good little Christian sits on their seat and doesn't respond and doesn't say and doesn't smile and doesn't engage and because I think that we're, we're moving past the, the point of just being good um, little spectators um, to being participators in the glory to being and how many of you know that, that when a word comes or when a song comes and you begin to participate in the glory and, and maybe you're sitting it doesn't really matter but, but in your heart you begin to respond and, and so um, I think that something happens in atmospheres when a room comes into agreement and a room begins to participate in the glory when a room begins to participate and, and so tonight we're going we're gonna to give you another opportunity to, to participate um, we're going to be receiving an offering tonight and this is one way for you to begin participating with, with your heart with Jesus said that where your heart is there your, your treasure is and this is a way um, uh, but this isn't the only way and singing isn't the only way it's a, it kicks something off it, it connects you with what, the, with what the Lord is doing in the, in the room it's like when you make an investment into an atmosphere when you make an investment into a culture when you make an investment into a region it connects you how many of you know that even when you buy different products and you invest in different corporations, sometimes you get connected to some things that you really wish you weren't connected to? Anyone? And there's an opportunity tonight to, to not just connect with a local church here and, 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 and an opportunity tonight not just to, to connect into what God's doing in a region, but there's an opportunity to, to connect with what the Lord's actually doing in the spirit. And how many know that what the Lord's doing in the spirit is way bigger than regional? Like what the Lord does here tonight, it's not going to be limited. Like there, there's going to be meetings and gatherings all over the Pacific Northwest tonight and all over the, the nations. And we're going to be drinking from the same wells tonight that they're, that they're drinking from throughout California and, and even in the East Coast. That We're going to be tapping into the same spirit tonight. And I would like to just encourage you um, to, 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 to connect, to say tonight I'm going to intentionally engage. Maybe you've never been here before. Maybe you don't know who we are. Maybe you're a little scared. It's going to be okay. <laughs> it's going to be okay. In fact, let's go beyond that. Tonight's going to be a night of significant breakthrough in your life. There's a, there's a couple different ways that, 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 that you can give tonight. Um, we do uh, credit card and debit card. We do that um, uh, through, our, through our cell phones. Um, and so uh, they'll put a number up. Um, and if you're watching online, I would encourage you to even, again, participate um, with what the Lord is doing here in the room, especially when you're watching online, it's easy just to just to sit back. And you know, there are some benefits to wa to watching online, like you get to stay in your jammies and you can eat popcorn. Um, but but tonight, if you're watching online, I would definitely encourage you participate with what the Lord is doing and have have expectation that Jesus is going to walk into your living room. He's going to step into your car. That whatever takes place in this room is also going to um, replicate itself. That the Spirit of Christ Jesus is going to begin. The glory of God is even going to begin to fill your house and your car and and your workplace wherever you're watching and whenever you're. It's, it's, it's a trip to think that in ten years people will be watching tonight for the first time and being impacted by the God who isn't contained by time or space. Isn't that incredible? So again, it's 425-441-3403, and if the year is 2025, at least check the website if we have such a thing. To, you know, anyways, whatever. All right. And if you're giving with a check tonight, you can make it out to uh, SRC. Um, we still do cash for now. There's envelopes in the seat backs in front of you if you're into that kind of thing. Here's what I'll do. I'll, I'll just kind of open up in prayer, and, and then uh, Jeanette's going to come up and talk about Katie Souza next weekend, and, and then we're going we're gonna to dive right into the glory, and, and Matt Sorger's going to take us to some places tonight. Are, are, are you expecting tonight? Are you excited tonight? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey. Let's pray. Father, we honor you. We honor your presence. We honor your spirit. We honor the liberty of Christ Jesus that we feel here tonight. We honor the, the, the law of the spirit that says that where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty and freedom. Tonight, we don't give from a place of familiarity or tradition. We give from a place of expectancy, knowing that we're not just giving from a bank account. We're giving from our heart that we worked hard for this money. And Lord, we count it in honor to be able to sow into what you're doing in the kingdom. Father, we thank you for who, uh, who you're using right now. Lord, you are using all kinds of people in all kinds of extraordinary out-of-the-box ways. But we especially give thanks tonight for Matt and Stephanie Sorger. Lord, we give thanks tonight for their family, God. Lord, we give thanks tonight for uh, the sacrifices that they've made and their desire to run to nations and do incredible things in the glory. Father, we thank you, Lord. 
Lord. We pray, Lord, that tonight would be a night of impartation and significant breakthrough. All for the glory of Jesus, we pray. And everybody said amen and amen. To give, we have baskets on the stage. God bless you as you give. Thank you. So how many of you have heard of Katie Souza before, are familiar with her ministry? Great. That's great. And if you haven't, you're in for a treat because um, next week, you know, we're moving in, we're changing seasons, aren't we? You feel it in a lot of ways, shifting and changing. And um, one of the things that I like about this time of year is be there's more opportunity for contact with people we love, our families and, and just friends that we happen to see more like Thanksgiving and Christmas than we do to other parts of the year. And one of the things I like about Katie Souza coming um, during this time of year, because it's a wonderful opportunity to bring people that, have, that need healing that need a touch of God, and that have lived a life that they wish they could get out of. Because, you know, Katie's testimony is a life of crime and, you know, bad girl stuff, right? Real bad girl stuff. But God had radically, radically changed her, and she now carries an anointing and a voice that will set people free while they sit in the very room where she is releasing what she carries. So you don't have to talk your friends into coming to some old, you know, uh, no, I can't say grandma service. I'm a grandma. <laughs> but I tell you what, there, um, I want you to start praying into who you love that you would like to see set free and then invite them to come and tell them to bring their friends. Okay, so this is where we start on Thursday night, um, Pastor Tony Kemp, who ha has an awesome miracle ministry, yeah, uh, a ministry of healing and miracles, and just a wonderful man of God that actually Katie suggested that he come with her, because she understands what he carries. So this isn't about who, which meeting you come to, that's how many, it's how many meetings can you possibly make. Okay, so we start Thursday night, Pastor Tony Camp is ministering, and then he will also minister on Friday morning. If you've never been to a morning meeting, you should really try. There is something really special in the atmosphere of a morning meeting that, um, and uh, I would just suggest if you can, that you would come. So Pastor Tony will be doing Friday morning. Then Katie on Friday night will, will minister. She'll minister again on Saturday morning. So another opportunity um, to, to bring the people you love. And then on Saturday night, we're going to have a, meal, a healing miracle service. Both Katie and Tony will be ministering, and mostly the glory is going to be here. Holy Ghost has a plan for, for Saturday night. So it's all, um, all barriers off on Saturday night. So um, I would just encourage you to make, uh, make an effort to do that. And after this weekend, we're going to take a break for the holidays. So we can love on our families. We can switch gears somewhat and take what we've gotten and, bring, and give it to others. So all of you, whether you're online watching or you come, you've received and received and received this season of, of uh, uh, importing into this place. So this is the time to bring it out, to take it out. Because the streets are hungry for what you're carrying. Okay? So um, it's going to be a really Merry Christmas. Yeah, it is. So, uh, okay, we'll look forward to seeing you all next week. Pastor Darren, don't you love Pastor Darren? Come on. Yeah. Yeah, they're uh, awesome. I do too. He's my favorite. <laughs> oh, well. And don't you love Jeanette? Oh, uh, yeah, you are amazing, Jeanette. So appreciate you. Hey, you guys are in for a real, uh, a real treat. This is, this is really cool that we were able to do this, um, that we were able to make this happen. This is a, uh, this is a one-off, you guys. This is a, a, a one special night with Matt Sorger. If, if, if you haven't heard of Matt, um, Matt's been running um, with the glory of God for, for, for many, many years. In fact, um, I, uh, the Lord has used him to do uh, just a, a, a diversity of things, from b bringing significant uh, prophetic words to the body of Christ, 
Christ uh, running with a special fire when it comes to evangelism and restoration ministries, especially in the nations. And, um, and he'll be talking a bit about that um, tonight, as well as just uh, uh, healing miracles. And then um, really, uh, Matt's been uh, one of these glory guys. I mean, um, just just run, you know, and how do you know that, and, and some of you guys don't know what I'm talking about, but there are these guys, okay? These glory guys. And, um, and it's so cool to see that Matt's part of a new generation of glory guys. And when you say glory, what does it mean? It means he participates with the active presence and person of Jesus in the meeting to accomplish the kind of hands-on ministry through the glory that could never be done if he was to lay hands on every single person here. But there's a special atmosphere that's created where you can engage the presence and person of Jesus even in the atmosphere and receive whatever you need directly from the Lord. And um, Matt Sorger has been modeling this. Um, he's got this incredible family. You're definitely going to want to connect with him um, uh, on his social, on Instagram and Facebook. Uh, he's been resourcing the body of Christ with some incredible uh, high quality revelatory products. He'll be talking about a little bit of that uh, tonight. But with all that being said, let me just say this. It's an honor to have Matt Sorger in the house tonight. Would you join me in welcoming Matt as he comes? Come on. Hey, <laughs> guys, stretch out your hands. Let's just bless him. Father, we just thank you for this man of God. We just thank you, Father, for how he's been running, for how he's postured himself. Father, thank you for bringing him to Seattle. Father, we just pray for uh, just a fresh drink, Lord, of your glorious Seattle apple wine from Matt right now, Lord, that you would just, just um, refresh him in the glory, Lord. We just pray that there'd be, ah, ha, ha, the kind of anointing that would make ministry easy and fun and efficient. Lord, thank you for bringing him here in Jesus' name. Everybody said. Hi, buddy. Hey. It's good. Oh, man, with that kind of opening prayer, I could just lay on the floor right now. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Hello, everybody. How many are excited for what God has for you tonight? I know God has something awesome for us tonight. It's a pleasure to be here. I'm so glad we got this this night in. Uh, this this past week, I don't even where where have I been? Lord Jesus, I've been somewhere between London, Norway, Ohio, <laughs> Virginia, Canada, and somewhere else. And now I'm here. Praise the Lord. And. I'm home for one day tomorrow, and then I fly out Sunday to be with Cindy Jacobs in Dallas, Texas for seven straight days. And we are, it's really historic what God is doing in this hour. It, you know, guys, it's an amazing time to be alive. Oh my goodness, with what is coming down and what the Holy Spirit is releasing, it is such an exciting hour. Uh, we're going to be starting this week with a prophetic um, roundtable, and then we go into a global prophetic roundtable where there's going to be 250 prophets from over 50 nations gathered together prophesying and praying and worshiping for two days straight, and then we go into a summit where we open it up for like a conference for the body of Christ, but it's going to be amazing. And what God is doing here is amazing. I mean, you guys are spoiled. <laughs> spoiled, spoiled, spoiled. I mean, you got Joshua Mills two weeks ago, Katie Souza next week, Matt Sorger tonight. No. <laughs> I mean, you're just, I mean, this is like such an amazing church, such an amazing place, Pastor Darren. Such, you are an amazing pastor. I mean, you're anointed. You are so anointed. So anointed. And what you're leading here and what you have dug and what you've opened up. And I see a well of God's spirit here. And I keep thinking back of Abraham, how Abraham's wells, you know, were, were buried by the Philistines. And then Isaac redigged those wells. And God made room for Isaac. And he was prospered in the land and was blessed in the land. And God made room for him there. And, and I just see a well here where God has made room for you. And that's how I see it in the spirit. God is just expanding your territory. And, and I see that this is a well that will never never run dry. It will never be covered. It will never be buried. It will never be buried. It will stay open. It will flow. It will stay fresh. It is a well that God has opened and the enemy will not be able to bury it like he did back in Abraham's day. Come on now. Whoa. 
You know, you know, you know Genesis 26, what I'm talking about, where the, the Philistines buried all of Abraham's wells, and then they started to redig, and there was contention and strife, and all of this stuff surrounding. You know, you got to understand, when you're digging a well in God, and you're going somewhere in the spirit, the enemy isn't going to sit back and just say, oh, praise the Lord, take over. Sometimes there may be some contention or some resistance, but what I've learned is when there's resistance in the spirit, get really happy. Because it means a whole new well is about to open up. It means a whole new breakthrough is coming. A whole new breakthrough is coming. And we are in a season right now of radical breakthrough. I mean, there's going to be so much breakthrough happening, it's going to be accelerated breakthrough. Breakthrough upon breakthrough upon breakthrough upon breakthrough. This is the kind of season that we're in right now. It's like, hold on, because breakthrough is going to overtake you. Praise the Lord. <laughs> oh, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Shokarabanda. It's an accelerated breakthrough. So God has opened a well for you here that the enemy will never be able to bury. He'll never be able to bury it. God's blessing is on it. And, and, I, and I just feel to say this. After God made room for Isaac in the land, he, they pitched their tent. And Isaac pitched his tent right between the altar and the well. That's where he put his tent. Between the altar and the well. What a great place to dwell. What a great place to habitate. Between the altar and the well. The altar, a place of sacrifice, commitment, surrender, devotion, consecration. And then the well, you know, the living streams of God's presence and joy and peace and righteousness and all of that. And he camped right between those two things. Praise the Lord. And this is what God's releasing in our, in our lives. There's going to be fire on the altar and, and water in the well. Praise God. Fire on the altar and water in the well. And we're going to be camped right there. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, my goodness. Okay, I got a word. I got a word in my heart tonight. Before I go there, because once I go there, who knows what's going to happen. So, because I've learned enough that the Holy Spirit is like the wind, and he breathes and blows and, you know, takes over. Anything could happen at any moment tonight. No, truly, anything could happen at any moment. You could be healed right in your seat. You can get a miracle right in your seat. You can get a fresh mantle and anointing right where you are. I mean, it's like you don't even have to wait for an altar call. You can just encounter God right where you are at any moment tonight. At any moment, an oil can pour on you. At any moment, God can put his hand on you and just release supernatural breakthrough where you need breakthrough. So we just give the whole thing over to God. Not just the altar time, we give everything. Praise the Lord. Okay, so after service... I'm going to be at my resource table. I love teaching, and I love preaching, and I love seeing people equipped and empowered. And we got tons of resources, but I'm going to highlight just a few quickly for you so you know what it is. Uh, we have started to do, for the last two or three years, online mentoring where it's literally touched people around the world. Over, I think over 500 people now have gone through our, our mentoring online. And we've got this one we've put together for you called Mentoring in the Glory. This is my favorite because it's all about how to live a, have, in a lifestyle of God's glory. You can wake up in his glory. You can go to sleep in his glory. You can drive your car in his glory. You can clean your house in his glory. You can, everything in the glory of God, saturated with God's tangible presence. So we teach you how to create that atmosphere in your home, where when people walk into your home, they get healed. When people walk into your home or just on your property, they get delivered and set free because of the abiding presence of God that's there. So we teach all about creating glory zones around your life, and that's on this one, Mentoring in the Glory. It's seven videos and seven audios, and it's 50% off. Praise the Lord. Then we got this one, mentoring and healing and miracles. Is your shadow dangerous? How many want to have a dangerous shadow? Oh, how many want to have a dangerous shadow? Come on now. How many want to have so much of God on you that when you walk into a room, he walks in with you? Right? And you just turn things upside down. So this is 10 videos and 10 audios all on miracle ministry. But it's not just believers will lay hands on the sick. It's, it's atmospheric healing. We go into realms of healing where it's healing in the atmosphere, where, where it's things like your shadow healing the sick or just the presence of the glory that overflows from you in that realm of the glory. Miracles just happen.
without even having to lay hands on people. And yeah, and we're seeing this happen right in the midst of God's presence. Bodies are getting healed, miracles are happening, and it's just awesome. So that, now the thing with those two mentoring sets, they are teaching, but also question and answer time, and also prayer and impartation time, because I understand some things are taught and other things you have to catch. You have to catch by being around it. So we have prayer times where we invite the glory in and we release prayers of impartation over you. People have told me they can't move for an hour afterwards because so much of God's glory comes in. So those are two great resources. Then we got a school of personal freedom. 21 teachings on here on how to walk through in, into places of freedom where, where let's say, you know, inherited generational weaknesses, how to overcome that stuff, how to identify strongholds, how to break strongholds, how to walk, how to walk through self-deliverance, how to pray deliverance for other people, how to deal with soul trauma, all of this stuff. So that's also 50% off. And we teach on the gift of discerning of spirits, which is so important to understand that gift. And then this one, shift your atmosphere. How many want to have a heavenly atmosphere? So this one is called Shift Your Atmosphere, Transform Your Life, four-part teaching on how to cultivate the atmosphere of the Holy Spirit in your life. And this one is one of our newest ones, and I possibly one of the most important teaching sets on our table. How many know the enemy loves to try to offend your heart? And how many know the enemy works overtime to try to get you offended? And sometimes he will use the flesh of other people to try to offend you. Come on now. Come on now. Anyone ever really want to lay hands on somebody? I mean, you really just want to lay hands on them. <laughs> and I cannot tell you in my own life and journey the number of times I've been tempted to get so offended by what has been happening to me or around me. And that offense, if I let it stay in my heart, could have short-circuited God's blessing that he had waiting for me. So we did a whole four-part teaching on this called Break the Power of Offense, Turn Your Pain into Power, and Experience God's Unstoppable Blessing. Because what I have learned is that no person, no demon, no circumstance can stop the blessing of God on your life. Sometimes we put way too much power in people and in what the enemy's doing. They cannot stop God's blessing on you, but you have to keep your heart unoffended. So we teach you how to, I mean, literally take the darkest, most traumatic things in your life and see the blessing of God overflow in those areas. And it's a great teaching set that'll, that is setting people free. It's setting people free and healing them. So that's a great teaching set. And this one, we have soaking CDs. I love soaking just soaking in God's presence and his word. This is called healing in his wings. It's a healing one. So it's worship music with worship, singing scriptures on healing, and then prayers of healing. And then we have one on the glory called awakening. So we got all those and more out there, and I'll be at the table, and I'll, I could sign my book, or I could sign CDs out there for you. This one is called Power for Life. This is our book. Bill Johnson wrote the foreword for it, and it was published by Charisma, and it's keys to a life marked by God's presence. And really, when you experience power in your life, God gives you power to experience healing of your spirit, soul, body, and mind, how to be totally free, but then when you experience those breakthroughs, how do you give those breakthroughs away to other people? Because the way you make the devil regret ever trying to mess with you is by giving away to others what, what God has given to you. You see, that's really how you make the enemy just regret it. Look, when he was messing with you, he was messing with the wrong person. Because God's hand is on you. And when God's hand is on you and you love God, all things work together for your good. Even the things that the enemy designs for your harm, God is the master redesigner, and he is able to take those things and work it for your good. Just like in my own life, you know, when I was 12 and my mom became really sick and, you know, bedridden by the time I was 14 on 24 bottles of medicine a day, diagnosed with MS, blood disorders, tumors, all sorts of stuff in her body. Nothing was helping her. She was getting worse and worse and worse. She was dying. And then she found herself in a healing service, praise the Lord, that happened to be a charismatic Catholic healing service, because we were Catholic, and the priests were filled with the Holy Spirit. They were filled with the Holy Ghost. Jehovah Sneaky. 
Jehovah Sneaky, they were filled with the Holy Ghost. And by the time my mom got up to that altar, look, the priest couldn't even get his hand on her. God put his hand on her. And she went flying 10 feet through the air. I mean, they didn't have catchers or nothing. And she went flying through the air, hit the ground with volts of power surging through every cell of her body. And by the time she got off the floor, she was 100% saved, healed, and delivered. You see? So, I don't care who tries to tell me that the things of the Holy Spirit are not for today. It's people's emotion. It's this, it's that, blah, 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 blah. I have already seen that one touch of the tangible power of God can change everything in your life. I have already seen it. I've already seen it. And when my mom came like shining like a light bulb through the front door that night after getting healed, I was like, who are you? What happened to you? She came shining like a light bulb and my whole family got saved. And that's what miracles will do. Miracles are a display of the radical goodness of God. And it was this display of the radical goodness of God that even led my family to repentance. No one had to hammer us over the head. We just had to experience the goodness of God and we wanted to get saved. We wanted to repent of our sin. Hallelujah. Oh, Jesus. Come on now. And then you know what we did? We got anointed by the Holy Ghost and we started to read the Bible. And I'm going to tell you, an anointing came on my mom. I mean, this anointing came on her seven hours a day for three years in the Word of God. She was in her own personal Bible school. I love it when Jehovah's Witnesses would come up to our front door. I loved it because I called my mom Miss Bible. She knew every scripture. She knew everything. And when those Jehovah's Witnesses try to tell her this and that, she knew the Word of God. And I'm telling you, they would leave. They would leave just like totally confused. They were like, they thought they knew what they were talking about until they talked to my mom. <laughs> oh, and you know, we 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 were just, you know. We were kind of unchurched. We never really went to church, but here we were reading the Bible and just believing every single word in the Bible. Just believe, reading it and believing it because look, I saw my mom get healed, so obviously everything in the Bible's true. So we had something called childlike faith where we just read and believed. And I'm telling you, there is something to the substance of childlike faith. And I remember we would pray, and it was like every prayer we'd get instant answers. There really is something to childlike faith that connects you to the power of God. And I think God wants to mature us into children. Yeah, he wants you to grow up. He wants you to become like a child. Grow up and become like a child. Because you will never see anywhere in the Bible where God calls you his adult. You will never see God say, oh yes, you're my adult. No. He always, no matter how old you get, you're always his child. You'll be a 90-year-old child, praise God. Radical childlike faith. Oh, Jesus, it brings breakthrough. It really does. It brings heaven crashing in on earth as it is in heaven. Childlike faith, where you just... Know the power that's in the name of Jesus. You know, really, you can be saved for one minute and know the power that's in the name of Jesus and see miracles and see God's power move. Hallelujah. Now, I want you to get ready. I want you to get ready for breakthrough because I feel like there's a breaker anointing that God is releasing. There's a breakthrough anointing that God is releasing. And when the breakthrough anointing starts to get released, the lightnings of God show up. Okay? I'm going to tell you a little bit about the lightnings. I'm not preaching on the lightnings of God tonight, but it's connected to breakthrough. Because when breakthrough happens, the lightnings show up. And I remember the first time I experienced the lightnings of God, it was, it was 15 years ago in India. When we started to do our mass miracle crusades in India. And I had no idea what I was doing. This was my first time doing a crusade in India. 
And I remember I preached my heart out that night. I mean, I preached so zealously. I banged on that wooden pulpit, and I told that whole crowd of Hindus and Muslims and Buddhists, your gods are dead like this wood, and I'm banging on the pulpit. <laughs> They're dead like wood. And after that service that night, the head pastor, they were huddled together, and the head pastor came up to me, and he said, brother, that was the clearest gospel presentation we have ever heard. And I'm feeling all good about myself. I'm like, yes, yeah, it was, wasn't it? That was a good word. I was going to preach the gospel good. <laughs> and he said, but are you prepared to pay the price? And I'm like, price? <laughs> what price? And he goes like this. <laughs> <laughs> and I learned that with the zeal I can have wisdom on how I present the gospel. But despite that, that night the lightnings of God showed up. And I remember speaking the name of Jesus over that crowd. The name that's above every other name. The name at which every, every knee must bow, every tongue must confess that he is Lord. And I just started speaking the name of Jesus over that crowd. And there was a woman way in the back of that crowd, a Hindu woman with her two daughters. One of them was going blind, the other was going mentally insane. And this woman was tormented by a demonic spirit every night. It would thrash her body in her home, and she had a broken leg as a result of it. But as I spoke the name of Jesus, the lightnings of God were released, and this woman sees a flash of light around her. See, when you see the flash of light, that's the lightning of God. That's the, light, that's the, that's the moving of, of his hand, of his power. She saw a flash of light around her, and as she saw this flash of light... As the name of Jesus was being declared, the demon that oppressed her left her body. And her leg got instantly healed. And then she turns to her one daughter, and her eyes are perfectly healed. Her eyes open, and then she turns to the other daughter, and her mind comes back into perfect soundness of mind. This was all before they got saved. This was before they, they accepted Jesus as Savior. This was just an encounter they had with the goodness of God. Then I'm going to tell you, when we gave that altar call that night, they were the first ones up to give their lives to Jesus. The first ones up. She came on that platform, five minutes saved, and she starts preaching the gospel to this whole crowd. And she says, I've been a Hindu my whole life. I've worshipped millions of Hindu gods. None of them can do for me what Jesus has done for me tonight. And she starts proclaiming Jesus. Because it's true. No other God can do what Jesus does. He's the Savior. He's the healer. He's the deliverer. He's the sanctifier. He's the provider. Come on now. He's the protector. He's the high tower. He's our strength. He's our righteousness. He's our joy. He's our peace. He's everything. Whoa, whoa, he's not just your savior, he is your righteousness, he's your sense of joy, he's your sense of peace, he's the kingdom of God within you, he's everything you need, oh praise God, shakarabanda, Jesus. And sometimes God shows up in unusual ways. And I feel like there's some things in my spirit that I want to declare tonight connected to breakthrough, connected to a fresh visitation of God that's coming. I want to preach a little prophetically tonight. Over the last month, I've been having some different encounters with God, some different unusual encounters. Started in London a month ago. Then it came in Ohio, then again in Virginia, and now we're here but I'm going to tell you what happened. I'm in the meeting, and as I'm there, this was a meeting in London. George and Banoff was there, and Jeremy Nelson was there. And in the meeting, I start to smell a burning fragrance, like a burning incense smell. And it fills the whole room, like a burning incense. And wave after wave, this burning incense came. And I thought, is there a fire in the room? 
That's how strong it was. It smelled like a fire. And I thought, there's a fire. Surely something is burning in the room. And I'm walking around the room looking for the flames. But there was no fire in the room. But people were smelling it all over the room. Then we go to, then we go to Virginia, and I'm on the front row worshiping, and this fragrance again starts to come like waves, and the girl sitting next to me, she's filming with a camera, and she leans over to me, she says, I know this is going to sound crazy, and I'm like, try me. <laughs> she said, I keep smelling a burning, fiery fragrance, and I think it's coming from you. <laughs> she says, because every time I look this way, I don't smell it. But when I look at you, I smell this burning, fiery incense. <laughs> Whoa. And then we're in Ohio. And again, in the meeting, wave after wave after wave of this incense burning this fire is coming again and i'm like by the third time i'm like god i need you to talk to me you're trying to tell me something god and in that first meeting in london during the worship i had a vision and in my vision i see this angelic being standing up near me in the front over here to my right and he, his hand is open like this and he's holding like a sensor in his hand and from it is coming up this burning incense so i'm seeing this angelic being i'm seeing from his hand burning incense coming up and i'm smelling it and i'm seeing in the spirit something that is connected to this fragrance that's showing up in the room so then i go over to the book of revelation and i read in revelation chapter 8 verse 3 and I read this, and it says, another angel came and stood over the altar. Remember I said before about the altar and the well. Pitch your tent between the altar and the well. It says, then he stood there over the altar, and he had a golden censer, and he was given very much incense, which exhaled perfume when burned, that he might mingle it with the prayers of the saints. Because in Revelation chapter 5, verse 8 through 10, it talks about the prayers of the saints rising as incense. So incense also refers to the prayers of the saints. But here is incense coming from the hand of the angel mixing in with the prayers of the saints. Upon the golden altar before the throne, the smoke of the incense arose in the presence of God with the prayers of the people of God from the hand of the angel. So the angel took the censer, now filled it with fire from the altar and cast it down to the earth. took fire from the altar of heaven and released it down to the earth. When the incense of the angel mixed with the incense of the prayers of the people, fire was released. Now I'm telling you guys, get ready for a fresh baptism of the fire of God. Get ready for a fresh baptism of the fire of God. There is a fresh fire coming upon the church. A fresh baptism of fire. Oh, hallelujah. And with it is coming a new move of prayer and intercession. Because every move of God is preceded by supernatural intercession. Now, I started to process all this, so of course I'm calling my friends and I'm asking them, what do you think about this, what do you think about that, what are you seeing, what's God saying to you? And I want to tell you a few things because it's pretty cool what God is doing, all right? So now, Patricia King writes me, and she says this, Matt, this is awesome. I've been crying out for there to be a perpetual fire on the altar of prayer, a return of the priesthood, intercession for the nations, and for the lost. So she starts talking about this fire on the altar, a fire that does not go out, that is an intercession for the lost, for the lost. Everyone say the lost. Okay, so then Sean Bolt writes me and he says this. He says, my frame of reference for incense angels would be that incense angels come before the next great outpouring and release what end time intercession and godly sorrow for souls like a homesickness for people who belong to him so that we would fall in love with them. A homesickness for the lost that we would fall in love with them and it would bring an intercession for the lost and for souls. And their incense angels released before the last great harvest. 
Yeah. Come on now. <laughs> and then, and then Cindy Jacobs writes me and she says, this is powerful. I've been talking and preaching about a baptism of fire and the crucible of God. So she's been preaching on the baptism of fire. And then Joshua Mills says to me, he says, Matt, it's a glory sign. He says, angels holding a golden censer, and it's a call to holiness, a return to purity. A return to purity. Oh, hallelujah. God is calling his people back to himself, holiness unto the Lord. So then Bonnie Shavda writes me, and she says, we've had two watches in the last few months where there was smoke and fire smell. She said, I had this happen in Virginia last night. Barbara Yoder just had two totally new level meetings, starting with her conference called Strike the Match. Oh, hallelujah. <laughs> I believe it's from heaven, the heaven realm, into which we are, in, into where we are. Uh, I've been having glimpses of a fiery coal in my hand, as in Isaiah 6. There is lots to be considered and said about all of this, a potential implication of Jesus himself drawing us into a fiery literal presence of Hebrews 12 and Isaiah 4. Meditate on Isaiah chapter 6 of the coal of fire. Oh, hallelujah. So there's a lot going on. There's a lot going on. And uh, what I sense is with this new baptism of fire, a new movement of intercession for the harvest of souls, and with this, and what I've really been sensing is a call of the Holy Spirit back to the secret place. Because I'm going to tell you what happens in the secret place, you are prepared for your next season in the secret place. And there is a re-preparation happening right now. A re-preparation. And what I mean is this. You may have experienced God in many different capacities up till this point. But what's coming, it's important that we allow God to prepare us for what's ahead. That preparation happens in the secret place. And what I've sensed is no striving, no striving in the secret place, but a being with God. And as you just spend time with him, he is going to prepare your spirit and get you ready. So you are right in the middle of what he's doing. Oh, hallelujah. hallelujah. Matthew 6, 6, about the secret place, it says, go to your father, shut the door. And when you pray to him in secret, he'll reward you openly. I've discovered something about the secret place. The secret place is a place where you are where no one sees, no one knows, no one knows the time you spend with God, no one knows your private walk with God, but what you sow in secret ultimately becomes your public harvest. Amen. And when you sow in the secret place, in private, there will be a public overflow of the glory and anointing of God on your life. Come on now. This is where it overflows from. This is where it comes from. It comes from the secret place of being with him, with God. And in this place, there's a preparation that, that is happening. And what I really sense is even in Joshua, I believe it's chapter 3 where God says to Joshua, or the Joshua says to the people, consecrate yourselves for tomorrow the Lord will do wonders among you. Consecrate yourself, for tomorrow the Lord will do wonders among you. Even there you see the preparation. Never despise times of preparation in your life. I'm going to say it again. Never despise seasons of preparation. If you are right now not in the full manifestation of your destiny and call, don't despise that time because what that means is if you're not in the 100% fulfillment of it, that means you are in the process of being prepared for it, which is just as vital as seeing it fulfilled. Because if you're not prepared for it, you won't be able to stay and hold it once God gives it to you. You want, you want to have deep roots? Come on now. You want to have deep roots planted by a well, so the deeper your roots are, the higher you can grow. Oh, I know, we all want to go high. 
We all want to go up. We, we want to go to the high voltage power lines. Come on, anyone with me? You want to go to the high voltage power lines? You want to go to the maximum place that you can go to in God? Well, the higher you want to go, that means the deeper your roots have to go. That means in the secret place, guess what God will do? God will soften and tenderize your heart to bring you into a place of consecration before him. Where you are set apart and separate for his purpose and for his plan in your life. Consecrated, set apart for a, for a holy purpose and a holy call. Oh, hallelujah. You are, you are anointed to be consecrated. You're anointed not just to display power, but you are anointed to be consecrated to God, to be separated unto him with fire on the altar. On the altar of your heart, the altar of your life, the altar of your family, the altar in your home, the altar in your church. Fire on the altar. Setting apart. Oh, hallelujah. And with this setting apart, you know what's going to happen? I'm going to tell you what's going to happen. The more consecrated the church becomes in the place of God's presence, in the secret place. I'm not talking about religious works. I'm talking about holy consecration by the Holy Spirit that comes from union with God. It comes from being with God. You become like him. You know what's going to happen out of that place? The fire of God is going to disintegrate everything the enemy tries to bind you up with. That's what happens. You wait before him and the fire of God fills your soul, the fire of God fills your mind, the fire of God fills your flesh, and everything the enemy tries to entangle you with, it burns up. The stuff that tries to entangle you, the stuff that tries to get on you, it burns up by the fire of God. And you see, the more that stuff gets burned up, the more free you are, the more free you are, the more authority you have, the more power you have. That when you speak a word, all of heaven moves with it. Like when Jesus spoke freedom over that man with legion, in the same hour he was completely healed and in his sound mind. Heaven backed that word and brought healing and transformation. You see, and this is what God's going to do. God is releasing a fire that will ultimately lead to mass movements of deliverance. I'm talking about mass deliverance. Mass, mass, mass deliverance where whole groups, I'm prophesying it, whole groups of society are going to be delivered by the fire of God. Whole groups of society are going to be set free and delivered and it's going to release a massive harvest and the church has to be ready for it. Be ready for it. Mass moves of deliverance. But you see, that fire is going to move in us. That fire is going to burn in us. That fire is going to set us apart, going to consecrate us. But it's also going to be the fire of his unconditional love, the fire of his heart, the, just the fire of everything that is in God is going to burn in us, and it's going to bring breakthrough. You're going to be like a walking, living flame. You're going to be like a walking flame of fire that everywhere you go, Breakthrough is going to happen. Everywhere, you're going to be a walking breakthrough. Everywhere you go, people are going to, people are going to get saved. People are going to get healed. People are going to get delivered. They're just going to get delivered because the fire of God that is abiding on you and in you. Oh, hallelujah. You're going to radiate. You're going to be walking radiators. <laughs> Just walking radiators of God. And people are going to be shocked because they're going to encounter him when you walk near them. People are going to get shocked. Jehovah Shaka. Jehovah Shaka is going to shock them, I'm telling you. God loves to shock people. <laughs> he loves to shock people. Oh, whoa, whoa, 
Whoa, there's an anointing in the room. Get ready for a fresh visitation of fire. Get ready for in your secret place for a new fire to burn on that altar. Get ready. Oh, yeah. Ooh. God wants to so saturate you that everywhere you go, you are a vessel of breakthrough and healing and deliverance. God's raising up deliverers. Who wants to be a deliverer? Yeah. And it could be very fun. You know, some people hear, hear deliver or deliverance, they're like, oh, no, I don't, I don't want to, you know, people throwing up and screaming and puking. No, it doesn't always have to look like that. I mean, sometimes it can, but not always. Sometimes deliverance can look like a lot of joy and a lot of, you know, a lot of love. And, <laughs> you know, I want to, I want to tell you, so, you know, this is life, okay? This is not just church. This is life. And you can carry this everywhere you go. And, and I, you know, for me, my life is a lot of times in airports and airplanes and hotels and just lots of places. And I remember one time I was, this happened recent, I was in an airport and I'm going to, up to the ticket counter to get my ticket to get on the plane, right? So I walk up to the ticket counter. I'm just going to tell you what happened, okay? I'm just going to tell you what happened. I walk up to the ticket counter. And the lady behind the ticket counter goes like this. Wow! I was telling you exactly what happened. Wow! And then she goes, oh! And she goes over the counter. And I'm looking at her, I'm like... And she goes, oh! You're so nice! You're so kind! You're so loving. I love you. And I'm looking at her, and I'm like, I love you too. I love you. And she's like, all the papers, give me my ticket, walk it away. She's yelling after me, I love you. And I'm yelling back, I love you too. And everyone's turning and looking. And, and honestly, I, I'm like, what the heck is going on, God? And I'm, and I'm walking away from that counter. I'm like, what is going on? What is going on? And I hear the Holy Spirit talk to me. And he says, when you walked up to that counter, I walked up with you. I walked up with you. And she came under my manifest love. And she was so overcome by love, all she could say was, I love you. She didn't know what was happening. All she could say was, I love you, because she felt so much love. She felt the love of the Father. She felt the love of the Father. Church, I say, let's get so full of the fire of God. Let's get so full of Jesus. So full of Jesus. Whoa. That wherever we go, people encounter Jesus. They encounter God. They encounter his love. They encounter his goodness. They encounter his healing. They encounter his freedom. They encounter him. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, Jesus, see, because you're anointed to open prison doors. You're anointed to set captives free. You're anointed to do this thing. You're anointed for this purpose. You're anointed for this purpose. You know, the secret place is an amazing place because the secret place will connect you to the heart of God. The secret place will connect you to the heart of the Father in ways that you would never have otherwise. And I remember it was shortly after me and Stephanie got married. We've been married now for four, almost four and a half years. Praise the Lord. And we have a little baby now. A little beautiful baby boy, six months old. 
and he's, his pictures are all over my Instagram. You know, when I was a single minister, my Instagram was full of selfies. Because when you're single, you have nothing and no one else take pictures of, so you take pictures of yourself. And you put them, you know, up on social media. Then I got married and all my pictures were of Stephanie. Now we have a baby and all the pictures are of the baby. <laughs> Praise God. I'm doing good. So now, me and Stephanie get married, and I'm in prayer, and I'm waiting before God. And as I'm waiting before God, the Father speaks his heart to me. And he says this to me. He says, find the lost children. And I remember when I heard this, I took a step back, and I said, how? That's a big thing. How? Because my brain automatically goes to the details. How? And God didn't say nothing to me. Silent. Find my lost children. And I remember the process I went through of wrestling to the point of surrender. Where my free will had to choose the will of God. And my free will wrestled through to the place of surrendering to God's will. Because you got your own will and you got God's will. And sometimes you got to wrestle through your own will to the point where you say yes to God. And then I remember having an internal yes. The moment I had an internal yes, the how began to unfold in miraculous ways. And from that point till today, guys, this is miraculous. We have seen 250 children rescued out of trafficking. Hallelujah. 250 and counting and counting and counting and counting. We started in India, went to the Philippines, and now in Mexico. We, in December of this year, as we came into this year, opened up the first home in Mexico registered with the government. It's historic. It's the first boys' home rescuing traffic boys in Mexico. First one. It is the first one. And when we came into this year, we have 11, 11 little boys that have been rescued out of severe trafficking situations. One as just a few months, this is just even the first quarter of this year, one little boy was sold into trafficking when he was three years old, trafficked to the age of eight years old, and is now safe in our home. Is now safe in our home. I mean, when I say trafficked, I mean he was sold to around 20 people a day, both men and women, and then sold out for movies, explicit movies as a child, okay? But now this child who was lost is now found. It's now found. You see, and Jesus is really good at finding these treasures, because that's what they are, they're treasures. When we started in India, one of the first girls, she was, she was kidnapped at the age of eight years old. And she was sold out to around, they estimate 18 to 20 clients a day, men, at eight years old. And sometimes she would fight back. And the, her kidnappers would discipline her, and they would discipline her by breaking her legs. And this little girl had both of her legs broken, and by the time she was able to get to the hospital, infection had set in so bad they had to amputate one of her legs. Okay, so then her kidnappers come into the hospital, take this little girl out of the hospital, and as they leave the hospital, they throw her in the garbage on the side of the hospital and leave her there as garbage, as trash. But can I tell you tonight, what man or what the devil says is garbage and trash, Jesus says is a treasure. They're a treasure to Jesus. This little girl, by the providence of God, was found by one of our staff pastors found this little girl, rescued her out of the garbage, brought her into our home, and she is now thriving in school and moving forward with her life. We, we were just sent this, and, and we're going to um, send it out to um, our sponsors and our partners and stuff, but we were sent video footage of this 
last Christmas, now you'd be amazed at these children that were rescued from such traumatic things, how they can be dancing around with smiles on their face. Dancing around with smiles. I want you to go. If you go to my Instagram page, you will see a, I don't know, 20-second video on there posted a few days ago. And I want you to look at the faces of those little girls because those are the little girls that I'm talking about. And you see their face and you see their joy and you see how they are transformed. And you could never imagine that those kids went through such things. You could never imagine it. But I want you to see their faces. Go, uh, when you have to go to my Instagram page and look at their faces, and you will be like, God, it's impossible that these kids went through that. But they did. They did. Praise the Lord. Because Jesus is a healer. And Jesus is a restorer. And Jesus is a deliverer. And Jesus releases anointing that sets captives free. And we're anointed for this purpose. You're anointed for it, and I'm anointed for it. Come on now. We're anointed for it. We, right now, we've got, we've got a list of boys' names right now in Mexico waiting to be rescued. But as we are here and as we go finish this year and go into next year, there are rescue missions happening, and that home is going to be completely full of rescued boys. And I've told Stephanie we're not stopping until we see at least 1,500 children rescued. And then when we hit that, then we'll go for the next 1,500. But that's our first goal. That's our first goal. Praise the Lord. Now, I want to share for a minute some vision with you, and then I'm going to, Pastor Darren was so gracious to ask me to share this. Every year we started doing this um, at Christmas time, we throw a massive celebration and party for these kids. We treat the boys like princes and the girls like princesses, and we make them feel that way. We throw them a massive party, we buy them new clothes, new shoes, jewelry, all new jewelry for the girls, toys and stuff for the little ones, and we just celebrate their life at Christmas time and tell them about Jesus and who Jesus is and how he loves them. Because many of them come from Hindu backgrounds, they don't know God or Jesus, but we begin to show the love of Jesus to them. And we're doing this massive celebration for our children, um, it's a lot of children, and it's a pretty high budget, and we trust God for it every year, but it's around hundred dollars for one child to get the food, the, the clothing, the shoes, the jewelry, the toys, and everything that we do in the party. It's around a hundred dollars a child. For us in our just in our normal care, it's around for India, it's around six hundred a year to cover one child. So these are just some statistics and some realities. But I will say this too, if you've ever had on your heart to rescue a traffic child, you 100% can. We've got an amazing structured system in place where we've got sponsors and all that stuff. You can see it at my resource table. Um, but I'm just, before we pray and just move here and see what God does, I wanna hand this over to Pastor Darren and he's just gonna share his heart with you. And then, uh, then we're gonna pray. How many are ready? How many are ready for the fire? Yeah. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thanks so much, Matt. I, uh, this is actually uh, my idea. <laughs> so I'll take credit. 1.8 million children are being sex trafficked each year. And, um, and uh, Matt and Stephanie, their goal is to see 1,500 children um, rescued from their ministry. Isn't that incredible? I mean, but still, it's only 1,500 out of, you know, 1 1.8 million every year. Thanks. Thanks, Anthony. And um, so I, I want us, for us to actually uh, rescue some children tonight. And um, they actually have a wait, like waiting list for a few of their different homes. Um, they have homes in India, in the Philippines, um, and also in Mexico. And I just think, like, what if every ministry had their own homes like what if you know wouldn't that be incredible imagine the difference that we could that we could make and I just thought like I, I don't just want to do another revival meeting tonight when we have an opportunity to sow specifically into um, uh, uh, rescuing children so we're going to take a uh, if Tom can you swap out baskets here uh, or, or uh, thanks James you're awesome let's swap out baskets we're actually going to take a special offering tonight um, to rescue children is that good and uh, every dollar that comes in is going to be going uh, uh, into this project 
Um, and Matt, thank you so much. And please give our love to Stephanie because we know that like Stephanie's heart is just behind this. Um, that, uh, 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 and so uh, let's just take a second. Would you pray? He, uh, you said a hundred dollars does does what? Covers a child for Christmas. All right, awesome. And we want these children to have an amazing Christmas. We want these children to be celebrated and, and to get dresses and great food. And, um, and so now this, uh, if you want to, in the, in, the, uh, in, the, in the memo, if you're writing a check, make it out to SRC. Um, if you can put the, the, I don't know how to do the credit card giving stuff. We're off the we're off the the thing now. Let's just give a check or uh, with a check or cash. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you have credit card and forms. Okay, so if you want to give into this project with your credit card, just go out to Matt's table. Is that good? Um, and then if you want to write on your envelope, um, uh, rescue one. Okay, so we'll just do this real quick. Isn't this cool? Yeah, this means so much to the Lord. Um, and then God bless you as you give. And then we'll hand this back to Matt, and then we'll do ministry. <laughs> then we'll go into ministry time, whatever that looks like. Thank you, Father. Again, rescue one, okay? Rescue and the number one in the memo. And as, and as you're giving, uh, I'm, I'm just going to pray. Father, we just ask, Father, that 2019 would be such a strategic year for, uh, for, uh, for, uh, for justice for these children. Father, we ask for wisdom and revelation for the different law enforcement authorities and the different people that are doing things, Lord. We ask that, uh, that, that people that are uh, exploiting children, Lord, that they would be brought into the light, Father. Lord, that, that this would be a year of radical exposure, Father, that, um, that, 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 uh, that, no, um, um, that even people in places of government that are enabling these things to happen, Father, that they would be exposed, Lord, they'd be brought into the light. We just declare the, the, the word justice over 2019. Father, we ask, Lord, that you would take this offering tonight and that you would multiply it, Father. Lord, we ask that you would bless Stephanie. Lord, bless Matt, Father. Bless Rescue One, Father. Lord, we, we pray for a special favor on each one of their homes, Lord. Lord, we also pray for their vision to see 1,500 children um, rescued, God. Lord, we pray, Lord, that that would happen so quickly, Lord, and then they'd go for their next 1,500 children, God. Lord, we ask even for uh, uh, more homes in different parts of the world, God. Lord, we just thank you for their vision to see children rescued, God. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for this offering, Lord. Lord, we thank you that this is a justice offering. This is a second offering tonight um, designated towards justice, Lord, in the nations, God. Lord, we thank you. Lord, we praise you for these testimonies of these children that were rescued. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for rescuing rescuing them. And Lord, we pray, Lord, that this, this testimony would duplicate itself over and over and over again. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for the call to love mercy, do justice, walk humbly before God. And Lord, we thank you, Father, um, for this opportunity in Jesus' name. Everybody said amen. Thanks so much, Matt. I'll just hand this back to you. Thank you so much. Thank you, guys. Oh, praise the Lord. Worship team, can you join me? Did anyone want to give by credit card? Because I have a credit card thing here. Just can someone help me? Maybe you could give this to the people who want to give by credit card, and they could use that form. And you could either drop it in the offering here, and the church can give it to me, or you could drop it at the table. Either one is fine. Thank you, Lord. How many appreciate this Holy Ghost DJ? Dude, you're the first Holy Ghost DJ I have ever met. Not just a worship leader, but a DJ. I mean, that's like, that is really something. Yes, at our table, we have a bunch. 
in the where the flyers are, they could use those slips. If anyone still wanted that slip, just lift your hand up. She'll get you one. Thank you, guys. You could just use that to write out your, please write clearly. <laughs> Otherwise, I'll need the interpretation of tongues to read it. When you write out your credit card info, Make sure you include your expiration date and also the three digit code, security code on the back, and your name, your address, email. We'll keep all of that very private and secure. And we shred it after it's processed so it doesn't hang around. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Oh, Jesus fire on the altar that never goes out whoa a fire on the altar that never goes out there's a moving of the Holy Spirit in the room right now if you are here tonight and you say, God, I want your fire. I want that baptism of fire on my life. And with it, I want that breakthrough. I want that consecration. I want that separation. I want everything that would hinder me to be disintegrated. And I want to run the race that is set before me, unhindered. Like a highway in the wilderness, a stream in the desert. If you want that, stand up to your feet. Whoa. Whoa. God is calling people right now. There's going to be a fresh wind of the Holy Spirit that breathes over your life and your family. It's going to be you and your household. You and your household. A fresh wind of the Holy Spirit is going to breathe over you. Whoa. There's going to come not just refreshing, but there's going to come empowerment. It's going to be resurrection power that flows within you. Robo, there's going to be an ease in the secret place. There's going to be a grace. There's going to be an oil in the secret place. A fresh oil of the Holy Spirit causing your cup to run over, causing your cup to overflow. An overflow of His presence in your life. Sure, Robo, Shaba, an open well that the enemy can't block up, but it's just an open well that flows and flows and flows and flows. Father, tonight, right now, Lord, I decree breakthrough in this place, and I decree breakthrough over every single one here tonight, God. And I thank you, Lord, that you are breaking them through, Father. And anything that has tried to hinder them or limit them in any way, I thank you, Father, tonight the fire of God comes and burns it up in Jesus' name. Whoa, the fire of God comes. Whoa, the fire of the Holy Spirit comes. A fresh baptism that consumes us. A fresh baptism that saturates every cell in our body. A fresh baptism, God. Robo shiki yabashi. Robo shiki yabasha batobo kobo shiki yabashi. Ko rebebe shiki yabando. Roboto shiki abato shiki abate. (sighs) 
living flames of fire living flames of fire releasing the incense of heaven whoa releasing father i pray that that same burning incense whoa that i encountered lord this month father i pray let the fire even from that incense mingled with the prayers of the saints father let it be released in our lives God is going to make you a walking breakthrough, and he's going to make you a walking, living flame of fire. If you want that, come to the altar right now, because tonight is the altar and the well. It's the altar and the well. Whoa, the altar and the well. Living flames of fire, carrying breakthrough, diffusing breakthrough. Whoa, diffusing the glory, diffusing the glory. Sho rebe be 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 shiki yaba shaba tobo kobo shiki yaba she. Oh, Lord Jesus. Oh, Lord. Let your glory, 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 let your glory. Let your glory Shora baba bando roboshi Ki arabando rebebe shiki abato Father let your hand come upon people right now Father, place your hand upon people right now. Jesus, place your hand upon people all throughout this room, God. Father, let your hand, let your anointing just begin to come upon people and begin to minister life, begin to minister healing, begin to minister breakthrough, begin to minister freedom. Father, let the very fire of God begin to diffuse throughout our spirit, soul, body, and mind. Whoa, let the weight of your glory show karabate, the weight of your glory. Whoa, come upon people tonight. Whoa, there's something happening in the room right now. Oh, there's an atmosphere. There's, an, there's a weight of the glory coming into the room. Some of you are going to start to feel the weight of his presence covering you, mantling you, overshadowing you tonight. The Lord is healing a heart murmur right now. Even as his presence just starts to settle down. Robo shiki yabando bo shiki yabato robo 
The Lord is healing a heart, a heart thing, a heart situation, even the beating, the rhythm, a murmur. The hand of God is just healing that rhythm right now and that heart right now. Lord, I just thank you for healing and making it new in the name of Jesus. 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 The Lord is releasing someone right now from anxiety, fear, worry. It leaves you. It leaves you. That anxiety leaves you. That worry leaves you. Even that depression leaves you. In the name of Jesus, I take authority over anxiety, fear, and depression. And I say in the name of Jesus, I lose your soul from it, I lose your mind from it, I lose your body from it. It leaves you, it leaves, it comes out of your soul in Jesus' name. Freedom right now for you. Freedom right now for you. Whoa, in the name of Jesus. Anxiety is leaving someone right now. You're not going to be tormented by that. You're not going to be harassed by that. It leaves in the name of Jesus. Oh, thank you, Father. Holy, holy God. Oh, that's his presence on you, my sister, right here in the front. Your hand is lifted up, and that's his presence on you right now. That's his glory. That's his anointing on you right now. And there's a breakthrough happening right now in the name of Jesus. I declare the breakthrough power of God. I declare the breakthrough is happening in you tonight and over you tonight in the name of Jesus. A fresh wind of God's presence. Breathes into you tonight. The fire of the Lord, the fire of the Lord, whoa, the fire of the Lord. The fire of the Lord. Whoa, the fire of the Lord. The fire of the Lord. Robo bo 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 she. Robo bo 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 bo. The fire of the Lord. 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 Shorobo shabando bo shabando bo shi. That's the fire of God. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Holy, 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 holy. Holy, holy. Holy, 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 holy. Oh, it's presence.
presence is coming over here. There's an anointing. There's a wave of God just moving right over here on my left side. Father, right now, I just release your presence. I'm telling you what I see right now in the spirit. I see addictions breaking right now. Things that have just been trying to hold you, I see addictions breaking by the anointing of God right now. There is a whole new freedom being released right now. It's an anointing, whoa, coming upon you, bringing freedom, 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 freedom. Because where the Spirit of God is, there's freedom. There's freedom. There's freedom, there's freedom, there's freedom. Show Robo, Father, right now. Father, just let your hand wave. Let your, let your hand move. Let your hand wave right across these people, God. Let your hand come upon them, Father. Robo, Shaba, Kaba, Shabandobo, 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 Kobo, Shabande. Robo, Shabande. Robo, Shabande. Robo, Shiki, Yabande. Yep, right over here. Here it is, right there, right there, right there, right there. That's the power of God. In the name of Jesus. Whoa, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, I tell you, people are going to be changed tonight. People are going to be changed on a deep level tonight. Oh, right here on this. Right here, right here on this person. Right there. Right there. That's the glory. That's the glory. Show. Shiki Yabandobo. Kobo. Shiki Yabandobo. Shabande. Oh, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, oh yeah, show robo bobo 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 shake, oh Jesus, whoa, Oh, there's coming another wave over here. It's just going to cover this whole side right here. The anointing is coming like a cloud right over here. The anointing is just covering right over. It's an overshadowing of his glory. An overshadowing of his glory. Oh, Jesus. Father, right now, I command addictions to break in Jesus' name. I just command them to loose you and to go. I command them to loose your mind, loose your soul, loose your body in the name of Jesus. Now. Now. Yeah, more of your fire, God. 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 More of your foe. There it is. There it is. Right there. Right there. Take it. There, take it. Right there. Oh, Jesus. Right here. Here it is. Coming right over here. Get ready, guys. It's coming right over here. Jesus, 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 oh, 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 here it comes right here, here it comes right here. sound of freedom oh it's the sound ha 
It's the sound of breakthrough. Whoa. Shorebe. Oh, Jesus. Oh, that's the fire of God. That's the fire of God. It's the fire of God. See, that's the fire of God. 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 Oh, Jesus, Jesus. Bobo shiki ya ba 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 to boko bo shiki ya ba te be shaba kaba shaba shaba kaba shaba that lady oh right back here robo bobo bobo that's the anointing on you right there that's the anointing on you right there oh Jesus whoa from the top of your head to the soles of your feet the fire of God. Whoa, the fire of God, 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 the fire of God. Oh, Jesus, Jesus, Holy Father, Holy Father, Father, bless these children. I just bless them in the name of Jesus tonight. I lay hands on them, Father, I pray your hand will be upon them. Your presence will be upon them, God. In the name of Jesus, your hand will be upon their lives, Father. Let your mighty anointing be upon their lives, Jesus. Whoa. Yep. That's his anointing. That's his anointing. Oh, Jesus. Oh, more of, you, more of 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 you, God, more of you, more of your fire, God, more of your fire, God, more of your fire, God. Jesus. Whoa. Yep. Father, I release your anointing right now. I release your anointing. Whoa, I release your anointing. Robo, bobo, 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 she. I tell you, I just smelt the sweetest fragrance of all, and now I'm smelling the fire again. There's something happening in the realm of the spirit right now. Oh, I'm telling you, there's a, there's a dimension. There's a dimension. Oh, there's a dimension. 
as a dimension of the fire of God. Oh, being released. Sure. I smell the fire again. Some of you may start to smell it. It's like a burning fire smell. Oh. 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 It's right here. It's right here. Whoa. It's right here.
We are, uh, we invite you if you want to just stick around in this atmosphere for a little bit and just soak in the presence of the Lord. I don't think God's done yet. He's never done actually, right? He's never finished. Uh, Matt's going out to the table and he's going to either sign books or CDs if you like. So um, God bless you. And like I said, you can stick around in here if you need to.